What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Now I'm still figuring this gimbal thing out. I think it's really awesome. I appreciate the feedback in the last video. Sorry, this guy's over here like using a, a blower right now. It's like perfect timing for me to make a video, but I think you can still hear me. But anyways, I'm just going to start this video by saying if you feel you're going to get triggered by me spraying primer over a hardwood that was meant to be stained, I would just click off of this video right now. Now it's not that big of a deal, it's just naughty alder, but I can already see the comments coming in of like, why are you spraying your hardwood? That was meant to be stained. Because I want to, I mean, <laughs> there's no other reason. So uh, a little bit of a backstory on how I found the inspiration for what I'm about to show you is Kira actually, the house where we're, I'm doing that big quote and everything's still pending on that right now. So I'll keep you updated if we're gonna do the job or not. But um, her first house, uh, she had a naughty alder door and she wanted us to paint it black. So I went over there, I primed it white, and then I sprayed it um, black. It was like a low luster Benjamin Moore paint and it was really, really nice sheen. And it looked good. But I remember when I first primed it white and I saw all those knots in the naughty alder just kind of like show up because you could definitely see them once you put that white on there. I was like, whoa, that looks kind of cool. It kind of has this coastal like driftwood vibe to it which me and Ashley are really into right now. And I was thinking that would look really cool on a naughty alder uh, coffered ceiling. And I was thinking who in the world would want a naughty alder coffered ceiling sprayed white? Well, nobody. So you're gonna have to do it, Richard, to your own house because this house is an experimentation and a lab for me to just try new things and bring you along with me as I do that. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm not gonna do the ceiling today. I'm actually gonna make mock-up samples of uh, the coffered ceiling uh, wrap, like the U-shaped beam with the crown, and I'm going to paint one of them, and then I'm going to stain one of them. I might not stain one in this video because I don't have the stains that I need or want, but uh, I want to make those two samples and show Ashley, and we'll figure it out. So it's going to be unique. Also, I can't lay it out in the typical grid layout that we normally do because there's vents and stuff in my room that I'm going to put it in, but I've I'll figure out another way to lay it out. That's no big deal. And that'll be even more of a learning experience for both of us. So without further ado, let's throw this sample together and I'll kind of talk you through coffered ceiling build a little bit. It's super easy. Probably one of the most easiest things you can do that people are intimidated by as far as carpenters. I get a lot of questions like, oh man, should I do this carpet ceiling? It's, it's really, you know, I don't know what, what to do. It's really easy. So I'll show you kind of my theory on it, how I build it. And if you watch my coffered ceiling video series, I have a three part series from start to finish, but let's make these samples. So to make these samples, it's gonna be really easy. I'm just gonna use my 18 gauge Brad nailer, nothing to it. And I'm gonna use my little Milwaukee saw for this. Here's the naughty alder boards that I picked up. I didn't pick these out. They just gave them to me. I told them to give me two one by sixes and one stick of the 8012 crown, which if you guys don't know, it, I mean, it's the most famous basic crown. It's that uh, 48 or 8012, whatever you want to call it, specific to your region. It's just that colonial profile right there. And that's it. That's all I'm going to be using to make this coffered ceiling. It's a very basic build. And it's just a real classic look, just a U-shaped box beam out of the one by sixes wrapped in this uh, 48 crown. So with the materials that I have here, I can make two two foot samples and that's what I'm gonna do. And again, this is a super simple design. I've only got a nine foot ceiling in there. So another reason I'm making this mock-up is so I can see is even this gonna be too big. I need to see that for sure. We're gonna take our tape measure and we're gonna mark a half inch there. And then we're gonna mark a half inch down here. And then we'll put, we'll line up our board right there on those two lines. If it's on those two lines, we know we got that half inch offset down here. And then we can just simply nail that through with the brad now. Now for this, I'm just gonna use some quick clamps to get me on those pencil lines. 
if I was doing this for real, I'd probably put um, a block up here that I could just push the bottom beam up to, this bottom face of the beam, and then I'd know it would be at that half inch offset for sure. What the heck? And this is why I'd probably dado it for stain grade. <laughs> That's not cool. Hey, we'll just say it's a knot. Sorry, ma'am. Uh, yeah, that's one. That's one of the knots from the uh, knotty alder. Remember, you chose it. So here's our simple U-shaped beam construction that you just seen me put together in a matter of minutes. It's very easy to put together. This will get installed onto the two by six that will already be installed on the ceiling. I like to use this material for the framing of these versus a one by because you get more material to drive a fastener into whether it's a nail or a screw. Now this right here also takes fasteners better too. They, it doesn't have any splitting, I guess, characteristics for other woods that you would use typically. So this is great. And um, another question that comes up is for, you know, what you're gonna put, are you gonna put like blocking down to nail this into? I get that question sometimes. And on our coffered ceiling video, I actually sandwiched two of these together because we were using MDF. And as you know, MDF sags a lot and it's not consistent like a real piece of wood. So that's the reason I did that. I had one of these on the ceiling, some blocking, and then one of these sandwiching in that blocking, another one of these. So that was, you know, you don't have to do it that way if you're using real wood, but with MDF, I was like, I just want a solid straight line across that I can shoot my nails into so it's not wavy and inconsistent like MDF is. So there's that. Now, you can see this right here. This will slide right onto there, and that's why I like to stick to using, you know, standard dimensional lumber because I can take a 2x6 and then wrap it in these 1x6s. Now these boards are pretty rough, so if I was gonna actually install these, I would clean these up and prep them more than I would just for this sample. So we'll take our crown, I'll chop up two two foot sections for this. We'll figure out the drop on this crown, make a pencil line on the side of our beam, and then we'll install it about like that. I think it's gonna be, probably be a little bit lower. So probably like that, pretty nice looking. Same thing for this side, three and three eighths, three and three eighths, connect the dots. This one's not too naughty, but the other one is. You'll get the concept, and so will we. Yeah, I think it looks really good. And what I was talking about here earlier is this offset right here, how I did this half inch. I wouldn't go more than three quarters on that because this is three quarters. So you'd want to have that consistency at least but I'm doing a half inch because I just don't think that ceiling height warrants that three quarter inch offset. I think it's just a little too deep, but this should be good. I'm gonna just lightly sanding sponge this and then we'll spray it with the primer and my little Cheapo Depot Graco priming gun. Yeah, and these things have a lot of um, chatter on them. So I definitely run them through the planer and sand these edges, they're pretty bad. Man, this stuff's actually pretty rough for S4S. Oh, that thing's spitting nasty. 
turn up the pressure. I think it's all the way up. Unclog. <laughs> well, this thing is spitting, so it's obviously a bad tip. I turned the pressure up and it's still doing it. But we can still see what's going on. Why is this spitting? All right, I'm going to clean this gun. We're going to let that dry. And while that's drying, I'll build the next um, stain sample. And we'll just do like a comparison side by side. So some of you are probably wondering right now, like, Richard, why didn't you just brush this thing? Why get your sprayer out and get it dirty where you have to clean it? And you, your sprayer spit on it anyways, what are you doing? Well, the thing about this, like you see these little knots, these little cracks in the wood that I love about it so much, those would get filled in with your brush. Your brush has a tendency to just want to flood in all those details. And obviously that's what we're going for. We want to see all those tiny little um, knots and splits in the wood so you can see this side doesn't really have a whole lot going on but the bottom you can see it has quite a bit and then this side has quite a bit as well they do make stains that are white and you know you, some people are probably wondering why I didn't go that route as well well the problem with that is you can still see the wood grain I don't want to see any wood grain I want that stark contrast between the white and the black of these knots and splits. I just think it looks so authentic. And the, the best word I can think of it is like a piece of driftwood that you just painted. So I think that's really cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and sand this up a little bit more and then I'll show you up close. I like the texture of it. I went ahead and filled these nail holes in too while I was waiting for it to dry. So those are still drying as well. I will fill those in on the real deal so I wanted to do it on this as well I don't want the nail hole, holes showing through I just want all the natural knots of the wood to show through and I think that looks pretty slick you can see right here got a nice knot right there it looks cool on the bottom of that edge grain and then these kind of spots right here where the gun spit and it kind of pulled the primer off because I sanded it but overall the spits weren't too bad and I think this is a good looking sample. So it's between this, in between this here, and this obviously looks, I honestly don't even think, I think we already decided, right, we're gonna do the paint. Yeah, I like the paint. Yeah, so it's cool to see them next to each other, but the painted looks so much cooler, in our opinion. That's it, that's the concept of the Naughty Alder ceiling. When will this happen? If, it, if we don't get that big job, it'll happen sooner rather than later. If we get the big job, it's going to happen after that. So December, so I know that's a ways out, but at least you're seeing this now. And I'm going to go hold this thing up and look at it later tonight and see how we really feel with the dimensions of the lumber, the one by sixes. But I think the proportions are perfect for a nine foot ceiling. We could change the dimensions of the lumber make them smaller, make them bigger, definitely not bigger for nine foot ceiling. But I think with the reveal that we have here, this is a two inch reveal, this is five and a half inches, and then the three quarter of course on the uh, offset, or on the width of this, and then the half inch offset. So I'll show you guys some up close uh, views on this with the little bit of sunlight that I have left. You'll have to ignore those spits from the sprayer that I mentioned, but I'm a big fan of that look right there that texture. I think it just brings a whole nother dimension to the build and it just looks super, super authentic. So pretty cool stuff here. Let me know what you think about this down in the comments below and you will see this going up um, within the next couple of months. So thanks for watching guys.